ಚಕ್ಷುರ್ಮಿಳಿತೀರ್ಥಂಕರೋಜಗತ್ನಾಜಯವಂತವರ್ತೋಜಗತ್ನಾಜಯವಂತವರ್ತೋಜಗತ್
This was written by Kun Kun Acharya, and then uh, it was translated into Sanskrit by Amritsandra Acharya thousand years back. And uh, in the last century, we were fortunate that there was a Gujarati translation. And right now, some of the uh, English translations are also available on this one. So we'll sing this Gujarati stanza right now. <clears throat> Jiva charita darasan adnana sthita swa samaya nishaya janava sthiti karma pudgalana pradeshe para samaya jiva janava What does it mean that in the very first word comes jivo, jiv, jivo? And what is this jivo means? And on that sim one word G O only, uh, Amrit Chandracharya found that seven different meaning of this living being means. What does this living being means? So he brought the seven different meanings, which for last three sessions we have three or four sessions we have gone in extreme detail. We'll just recapitulate quickly. Soul's existence is with origination cessation and constancy in nature so soul is existing with origination cessation and constancy ocean is there ocean is stable but at the same time when you're sitting on the bank of the when you're sitting on the beach you can see a wave come and breaks wave comes and breaks. that wave coming and breaking is a modification occurring in the ocean Ocean is a constant thing. There is no changes occurring in ocean since ages. But the modes means modification, means origination, cessation will constantly occur in the ocean itself. Soul itself has a constancy in nature since time infinite. But at the same time, every moment, every fraction of a second, it keeps on modifying by itself. And that is the nature of the soul that we, we talk in a greater detail about those things. Uh, they, uh, let me move this guy down below here. Uh, so, second point was soul is consciousness, a soul is with consciousness nature, which includes knowledge and perception. Means consciousness is the characteristics of a soul. Any, any if you're given all the six universal substances and you are being said find out what where is, where is the soul here then you can just say if i can find a consciousness present in any of the substance that has to be soul for example you go to the market and you have been told bring orange all kind of fruits are there why will you pick up orange only because there are particular characteristics of the orange and that's why you'll pick it up same way soul has consciousness that consciousness includes knowledge and perception. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, next. Soul is with infinite ability and having indivisibility with them. Soul has infinite, 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 infinite amount of attributes present within. But those attributes are not like you just, just, just separate them out. They are part and partial of the soul substance itself because all these infinite attributes, they remain in unity with the soul substance. And we talked about detail about that one also. Soul is with sequential and non-sequential entities, means soul has attributes and modes. Attributes are infinite in nature and each attribute has one modification occurring at every every moment and that is called Samai. It, 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 this, this is not the right place to describe what Samai means but in, in, in for our understanding right now Samai means in, in blink of an eye. If I blink the eye once like this that means there are innumerable amount of Samai pass by innumerable amount of moments pass by and those are each moment each mode each modification i mean each summary 
each moment there is going to be one mode occurring in one of the attributes and all the attributes combined together will be having one mode present and that is happening every moment <clears throat> soul has self and alien knowing capacity so soul has a knowledge what is this knowledge do what is the perception do it 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 illuminates the self as well as it illuminates the rest of the other universal substances for example there is a lamp in my room right now where i'm sitting there's a lamp this lamp illuminates the lamp by itself and it also illuminates the whole room same with knowledge is like a lamp it illuminates the self also and it illuminates the whole universal substances so that is the function of the uh, knowledge uh, attribute and knowledge more thereafter we are going to see the soul having its own specific attribute of consciousness separate from its all of the universal substances the the, the soul's consciousness attribute soul is staying in the same space point as other universal substances if you pick up one space point of the uh, cosmic space on that one space point you will have the presence of soul presence of um, a matter presence of medium of motion presence of medium of grace space and time all six universal substances will, will be present in that given uh, 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 space point but with those things also having is occupying the same space point but soul remains with his consciousness nature separate from all other universal substances and last one is uh, uh, uh kerry tanko can you just explain that last one again yes for example Thank you. sorry i didn't understand it okay let's see the the cosmic space cosmic space where all the six universal substances are residing cosmic space has space points and how many space points innumerable space point asankhya asankhya means innumerable sankhya means countable numbers 100 10 100 1000 10000 100000 million 10000000 billion 10000000 billion, all those countable numbers but beyond the countable numbers then we can just say they are the uncountable space point so cosmic space has a uncountable space point now how many souls are in this uh, uh, cosmic space infinite now oh. infinite is lot lot larger than uncountable number so remember you have the souls i mean the, the, the cosmic space has so many space points and in that one huge number of souls are living now okay. infinite number number of souls are living infinite times infinite time types of uh, uh, matter particles are living so think about it that uh, you know i mean it's just like back home that you are in a train and uh, you know train has a compartment and it just says uh, but so many passengers can sit down but then there are so many more people are there how do they occupy they just say hey you know what we are going to make it no matter what so i mean right away on the station when everybody keeps rushing in we just become uncomfortable but pretty soon then we just oh yeah yeah you are friend and this and that and everything so here also this limited space and infinite number of soul infinite times infinite um, matter particles and medium of motion is one huge thing occupying the whole um, cosmic space medium of rest occupying the whole uh, cosmic space a uh, cosmic part of this uh, uh, space occupies every smallest area of the cosmic space and time element time time is residing in each and every cosmic space one unit is present so that way if i take a tip of my uh, tip of my finger here right now 
that there is going to be matter particles are here in the same space my, my soul is also residing same space medium of motion medium of race uh, space and time and elements are present so each and every space point has all six universal substances are present but they maintain their own individuality they mm. don't soul doesn't become matter matter does not become soul in spite of staying in the same space point for infinite number of years right okay let's see next thank you no problem uh, oh whatever okay here next one next one soul having space point as the other substance still does not lose its innate form of consciousness so soul remaining uh, soul cannot lose its own attributes in spite of occupying same space point it just does not lose his own characteristics so these are the seven things that we describe now out of the seven thing what do we learn out of it what do we learn uh, let me put these people all these things off completely. okay what did i learn from all these things um, from above seven adjectives it describes the nature of the soul that we talked about it says avo jiv namno padarth samay che now amrachandra uh, 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 acharya dev tells us that this is the nature of the soul substance samay means soul over here so this is the nature of the soul substance that that has seven characteristics that we just described in the previous slide then it says next it says um, Che is is word says that the soul substance exists seems time infinite and will remain forever. I, I am here. I am here. That means I was there in the past. That means I was in the distant past also. That means I'm here. That means I'll be in the future. That will be I'll be in the near future and I'll also be there in the, the distant future also because because me soul was never created will never be destroyed it remains constant forever so 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 you have, it's beyond our intellect human intellect to understand what is this infinite times that soul substance is present we just say it's there that's it it was never created will never be destroyed it's there that's it that's it that there is no so once we accept that point then we keep going and we understand the philosophy deeper and deeper and deeper then it makes sense to us that a soul substance was never created never be destroyed so soul is its own existence nobody can do anything to this so you can't do anything to me i can't do anything to you well it appears that i may be doing something to you you may be doing something to me it appears that way but that is not the case whatever is going to supposed to happen to me right now is going to happen and at the time you may remain you may come as an instrumental cause what is going to happen to you is going to happen to you and if i'm coming in picture means i'm instrumental cause instrumental cause doesn't do it's like a catalyst doesn't do anything but its presence is important so word mm -hmm. is means soul substance exists since time infinite and will remain forever uncle yes if, uh, so if soul was never created and never destroyed Yes. Does it mean the same number of souls have existed forever? Yes, an infinite number of souls are present in the universe, and that number is fixed. That number is not going to change. But it's an infinite. Infinite means if you start counting from today right now, and in one summer you just say one like that. For example, means in a blink of an eye you already counted up to million billion trillion quadrillion whatever whatever if 
that speed, if you keep on counting and counting and counting and counting, it will take forever time for you to completely count those things. So that's infinite means. And, and again, in a Karnani Yoga scriptures like Dawla and everything, they have absolutely given definition of this infinite and it is mind boggling. It will give you practically busy spell going through those, 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 those explanations that they have given. But literature gives explanation. Now, what is most important for me right now? Important thing for, is it important for me that the infinite souls are there, or is it important for me that I am the soul right now? So I, I, I limit myself to myself and narrow down my vision and go through it. But if I want to have the answer, if I want to get this real, real, real answer about this infinite, I can find it. I, you can, the literature gives the answers for kind of things. So the, the amount of intellect and time it takes, it can be found out. But it is not going to be useful for my further progress. I have a limited time. We all have limited time of so many years of lifespan remaining. And that too, I don't know tomorrow I'm here or not. So that kind of thing that we have it, and in that situation, I try to do what is the best possible thing for me to progress further in spirituality aspect. So that is infinite thing that we talked about. Now, even by staying in the same space point, soul does not lose its independence. All the six universal substances, they remain independent. Water molecule, water molecule is there since time infinite. Now this water molecule changes into rain or it changes into snow. Snow melts, becomes water. Water flows in the river. River goes to ocean. Then this water molecule gets evaporated. Then the vapor goes in the sky, becomes cloud becomes rain and or snow and the six keep cycle, cycle keeps on uh, repeating but H2O remains constant. So this is what, how, how am I remaining constant forever? Because I'm the soul, I remain constant but I keep on changing my form. As water keeps on changing, water to vapor to snow to water, same way I am going from hell to heaven to uh, subhuman to human and I keep on changing my uh, realms but by changing my gati, my realms, I still remain as a soul and I don't lose my independence. With this, with the capabilities of discriminated science, now the important word comes, soul separates self from the rest of the alien substance. Now, what happens? Now that I am right now tied up in the human body. My soul and body appears to be same. Now, I, I have to do the Ved Gnan means discriminative science and as long as I do the right knowledge and then I separate myself from the alien objects, that means I'm getting purity within me. I'm like that a gold, dust, in the mind, that gold, that, that, that gold particles mixed with the dust, mixed with the dirt, they, in that one also dirt has its own properties and gold particles has its own properties, but they appear to be so mixed up for, together for time, a long, long time in the minds. Now that I go there, I get the dust, and I, I, I take the dirt out and I come home and I pass through the process of uh, fire. When I'm passing through the process of fire, on one side becomes a gold particle, other side becomes a dirt, and then they become separate. And that is called discriminatory science. That is called Ved Gnan. That means it, it has separated the gold from the rest of the material. That means I have Ved Gnan, discriminatory science, I'll separate my soul through from this alien objects. 
and that is called discriminatory science. And uh, for the gold are to pass through the fire, for the soul to come out, I have to pass through the, uh, 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 the fire of knowledge. And this knowledge, right knowledge, will separate two things out. So having those things, this is I have seen. So now it just says, so 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 far discussion says that uh, me, I am the soul, I am pure and everything. I don't see purity within me. Come on, how can you say all these things all the time? That I am the Lord, I am the Bhagwan, I am the Omniscient, because on the dirt is mixed up with me. My, my I have inclination of attachment and aversion and that's why I don't I, I, I don't see my pure nature I'm, I'm still confused give me some example so Acharya Bhagwan says okay I'm gonna give you example this is Lindy people now you know <laughs> you guys who are born and brought up here you don't know what this thing is but it's actually a Lindy people is a hot product from an herbal medicine medicinal plant it, it, it is it's a very flat in the taste and black in color if you just suck on it if you don't do anything just put it in your mouth and suck on it it's a very flat there is no taste at all and it's a black in color but upon grinding upon grinding but in a mortar and pestle when you start grinding this uh, lindy paper then what happens the green color comes out and very hot, fiery taste comes out. Same thing over here, which are flat in nature, black in color, but upon grinding, the green color comes out and fiery, red, hot, fiery taste comes out. So it was present within, and that's why it came out. The, 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 the nature of green color, and nature of fiery taste was present in the Lindy people. That's why it came out with a particular process. Same way, this soul, this soul has capacity to become omniscient Lord by self. I am the one who is going to become omniscient Lord one day. But right now, I'm like this Lindy people. I'm flat in taste. I have black in color. I'm involved with uh, inclination of uh, attachment and aversion, and I'm in, I'm I'm uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, uh, engrossed within my infatuated state and everything. But when I go through Vedgnan, discriminative science, and when the process occurs within me, then from the same soul which has lots of rag and dvesh, inclination of attachment and aversion and infatuation from the same thing will come out omniscient knowledge ever know about whole universal knowledge will come out and with that thing i'll also have a super senses bliss will come out from me because it is within me it's not going to come from outside it's going to come only from inside because it is there so this is a great great example that our literature is giving so Let's see. Uh, okay, so similarly, soul is full of knowledge and perceiving capacity, knowing and perceiving capacity with this community science, Vedgna, all knowing state gets illuminated. My all-knowing state is sitting within me. Now, with this discriminatory science, that knowledge gets illuminated. As it was present within, it got illuminated. There was no help from any alien object. That is most take-home point over here. There is no help from any alien object. I am ready. I am going to do my personal effort. I am going to illuminate my nature. I'm going to get the omniscience knowledge. Nobody is going to do anything to me. Nobody can interfere in this process. So I won't have any help from any alien. Yes, when I'm on the right path, then omniscient Lord, Holy Scripture, 
and enlightened monks, they will be present as instrumental cause for my, pro my pro progress, but progress has to be started with me, buck stops at me, because I'm responsible, nobody else is responsible for my problem. I created my mess, I'm going to uh, uh, rectify my mess. No help from worshipping, compassionate feeling, charity, etc. Now, that means, do I not go to temple tomorrow? Do I not have any compassionate feeling to the other living being? Do I not give charity and everything? Yes, I have to do that. But, but because I'm going to do that, that it's going to help me to illuminate myself, that kind of feeling is a wrong feeling. You have to do those things. When I'm not illuminating my knowledge within me, at least that time I have to do this kind of activities, but they are the one that I'm going to do it to stay away from inauspicious activity. I don't, have to do, I, I don't want to do inauspicious activity. That's why I will do this activity, but ultimately my aim is Vedna and discrimination, discriminatory science, and I would like to illuminate myself. Now, with discriminatory science, rag waves are removed, means inclination of attachment and aversion are removed, and omissions knowledge gets illuminated. So, discriminatory science, discriminatory science, discriminatory science, Vedna, Vedna, Vedna. That is only the bottom line for me to experience my true nature of the self. They say that uh, when you, when you, when uh, those people who are uh, breaking the whole mountains, how can they do that? It is very, very important process that they do. When they want to break the mountains, what they do, they go to the mountain and there is one thin brown line is they can find it out. It is there. And this thin brown line that they put their fireworks there, and with that thing, they just break those things with this fire, uh, fireworks. And that way, mountain becomes two separate things because that thin brown, thin brown line, that thin brown line is the discriminatory science in the sense that I have the pure nature of the cell on one or soul at one side, and inclination of attachment and aversion on the other side, and they both get separated out. So this is what it is. So discriminatory science, Vedgnan, that's a path to the salvation, that's called omniscient knowledge, all liberation are having the same meaning. So we don't want to get confused. They all mean the same meaning. Whatever way I can come to the spiritual path, whatever way I can reduce and eliminate my inclination of attachment and aversion, that's what I have to do it, and that's called discriminatory science. Now, uh, our, our, uh, our Gurudev Sri Kanji Swami, when you're telling all this thing in uh, Bombay several years back, 40, 50 years back and everything, and people say, Gurudev, you are talking too much and too detailed and the soul and discriminate science and inclination of attachment. Uh, we, we don't understand all these things. Give us a shortcut. Is there any shortcut? He says, yeah, I can give you a shortcut. So what did he say? He said, Parthikas, Swamavas, Etlukartabas. That means, remove yourself from the alien belonging, belonging and stay within and that's it, that's religion. And that means my all the alien belongings. What does that mean? Well, then you have to come to me. That's what he said. That's what Gurudev said. And now you have to come to me to understand what is alien belonging and what is my true nature of the self. And then I'm going to explain to you all the things. So these are the shortest possible way. Remove self from alien belongings and stay within. In general. I don't do any inclination of attachment and aversion. And that's all. If I stop doing it, nobody asks me to do it, but I do myself. So if, if I control my inclination of attachment and aversion, 
and eliminate them, that's it. I made it. That means my self-experience, and that's the beginning of the clarity. Okay, so now, so one has to manifest righteousness state. Means one has to be become dharmic person. Righteousness state means what? Means I will get, take my inclination of, I'll take my attention away from inclination of attachment and aversion. For example, example, that, uh, um, that, that, that you have invitation to go to three different places for meals today. You have invitation for at, uh, meals at three different places. One guy says, we have made the Mexican food. Other guy says, we have made the Italian food. And third guy says, yeah, food is ready at our place. We have the uh, 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 rice and wheat flour and oil and salt. So what did he say? Wait, 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 wait a second. What do you mean by that? Well, when you eat whatever type of food you are going to eat, ultimately when it goes in the stomach, your stomach doesn't say that, oh yeah, I ate a good Mexican food or good Italian food. Your stomach says, I have got my protein, carbohydrate, fat, I want it for today, I got it. So my tongue, 10 to 15 gram weight of my tongue makes me dance around. No, I like this. No, I don't like. So righteous state, righteousness state says, you remove your likes and dislikes. You remove your inclination of attachment and aversion from objects, alien objects. If, if I, I, I have an association with the body, yeah, it's okay. It's there till I'm going to stop breathing. But that association is there and it stops there. Rest of the thing I'm trying to do to remain and grows within my true nature and at the time, I even forget that my body exists. That kind of state is called righteousness state. And when I do that, it will manifest my soul substances, real nature, because now my object has changed from alien object to my own self. I've taken complete U-turn. For time infinite, I'm running, 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 running towards the uh, uh, alien objects and try to look for the happiness from them but I don't get any happiness from there. Now I took a U-turn and I said, let me go within and see what happens. I tried to look within my soul substance and I said, wow, it is full of knowledge. And that, that knowledge also gives bliss. My super sense is bliss coming from within. When I do understand that part, that's what from the righteous state occurs. And it will illuminate. It will illuminate my peacefulness, passionless state, innocence, and purity, which is there within me, which is there sitting within me since time infinite, and then I have not looked at it at all. So now, positive and negative affirmation. Maybe can you take this call, Manu Bhai? No. Positive and negative affirmation, what it says. Sorry, I have this noise coming. Uh, okay. Now, now th th this righteousness state means to experience my soul substance. That, that, that they, are, they are giving from two different uh, angles that's been described. Getting rid of alien belongings is negative affirmation. I will come back to this point again. And engrossment in the eternal self is a positive affirmation. Now remember, since time infinite, you or me, we have not experienced our true nature of the self. We have ne never experienced. So when I have not experienced, and literature keeps on talking about engrossment in the eternal self, you just go within, you experience yourself. These are Greek and Latin to me because I never experienced those kind of things. It is just like me going to um, um, uh, uh, South America and they are talking um, um, 
whatever language, I have no idea what they are talking, you know. So here, same way, I have no idea what is this engrossment in self means and everything. So Acharya Bhagavan says, okay, 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 calm down. I know, I know, I know what you mean. But do you become angry? Oh, yes. Somebody pulls my leg. I do become angry. That is not your real nature. Do you have the ego? Yes, I am full of ego. That's not your true nature. Give up your ego. Do you have possessiveness? Do you have greed? Yes, I'm full of greed. I want, I want, I want, I want every time, every time. So Acharya Bhagavan says, that is not your true nature. So getting rid of alien belongings, that I know it. I shouldn't do the anger. I shouldn't be egoistic. I shouldn't be greedy. I shouldn't have a, a crooked nature within me. I, shouldn't have, I, I should not have a, a, a inclination of attachment within me. I should not have inclination of aversion within me, rag and duesh and everything. So those are the things which I know it. So Acharya Bhagavan says, okay, so that is from the negative affirmation I'm telling you to get rid of those things. And once you get rid of those things, that means you will be on this path totally, totally. Do you remember one time we had given that example that one guy is standing on the uh, uh, um, cliff and he's enjoying the view of the uh, uh, valley, uh, valley underneath and suddenly his foot slips and he's falling down in the valley from the cliff and he's falling, falling, falling and he knew he's going to die. So he just tried to catch whatever comes on the way. So one tree comes on the way so he hangs around the tree and now this tree is very dry and because of its weight, it is about to come out from the uh, uh, root and everything. So he becomes very, uh, very desperate. And so he starts screaming, is there anybody, is there anybody? And uh, oh, oh Lord, they always say, this, this, they say that you are there, you are there. Are you there? Can you help me? Can you help me? So Lord, there is a uh, uh, Lord says from the sky, Yes, I'm here to, please help me, quick, 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 I'm going to die, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fall down. What shall I do? What did the Lord say? Let both the hands grow free. The guy said, are you nuts? If I do, then I'm going to fall down, I'm going to die. Because he did not have really faith in that Lord's sentence. Now, when, 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 when uh, my, my uh, enlightened monks and the true teachers are telling me, get rid of your anger, get rid of deceit, get rid of uh, greed, get rid of your uh, uh, ego and everything, wait a second, what will I do then? Because they say that when we did that, we did uh, got the engrossment into the eternal self. And so you will also get it. So this is from positive and negative affirmation, this kind of thing that's said. Eternal true nature of the self has emptiness from inclination of attachment and aversion and fullness from innate nature. When I become empty from my anger, deceit, ego, greed from here, then I come down over here, which is full of innate nature, full of peace, full of enlightenment, full of uh, super senses, bliss. So I have not experienced, but those people, those super souls that they have experienced, they are telling us, so I'm going to believe to them. Now, with discriminated science, omniscience knowledge, which was in dormant state in the soul gets illuminated. It is there within me. I just have to take a brush and take the dirt out and it's going to shine from within me. I have the, 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 the pure diamond within me. It is bright and bright in nature, but I have kept so many clothes wrapped around that I can't see the light of that uh, pure diamond. If I start removing those clothes and then uh, uh, all those uh, 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 layers I remove, and then the diamond comes out, it gives me absolute beautiful light and everything and I enjoy same way here my omniscient knowledge which is in a dormant state that it will get illuminated by discriminated sand this removes the misery of transmigration migration suffering because 
when, 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 uh, when, uh, why I am trans, why I am suffering in transmigration? Because I am having the alien attachment. I have to look within me, and then all the alien attachment are removed, and uh, 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 omniscience is illuminated. It produces supersensuous bliss also, which remains there forever, uninterrupted. Omniscient Lord, they have the supersensuous bliss. And once they have experienced, it remains there forever and ever and ever and ever. Then, now that they, get, they, they, they are given similarity, the sun is shining and someone shows it, but someone is showing the sun is shining, but I'm in a deep sleep with the eyes shut, with the mucus in the eyes, with a thick blanket in a dark room. And it's my own fault that I have somebody is going to show me the sun shining, but I'm not able to see because of my own problem. Here, uh, I'm in a slumber of wrong knowledge and shut the eyes towards the reality with the mucus of ignorance and delusion, which is my own creation. It is my own fault. And enlightened person. Enlightened people, those who are self, those who are experienced the true nature of the soul, they are showing me the lights of consciousness. They are showing me that light of consciousness is shining within. Look within. Open your eyes. Come out of the slumber. Find it out. You will know it. But it's me, dumb person, doesn't understand this part, and that's why I keep my keep my alien attachment throughout the life. And since time infinite, and that's why I cannot see the sun shining or the light of consciousness coming within me. Um, so now this is the definition of swasamai. Swasamai means engrossment in the self. All this thing we talked so far was engrossment in the self. You see that this uh, the stanza says, "Jiva charita darshan jnana sthit swasamai nischay jano." Means the soul which has remained engrossed in the self that is called swasamai. Now we'll see. Soul gives up attachment to the alien belongings, focusing the att att attention to the eternal soul substance. It gets engrossed in the right knowledge, faith, and conduct. One may manifest the eternal innate nature of nature in his mode and Unity of triple jam means what are triple jam here? Right knowledge, right faith, right conduct. They are the triple jam, and there is a unity of the triple jam occurs, and this is known as engrossment into the self means swasame. So very first stanza it says Jiv Charit Darsan Nan Sit Swasame Nishya Jano means when the soul is engrossed within his own true nature with right knowledge, faith and conduct, that means it is called Swasamai. So until now, for, for last four hours we are talking for last four weeks, that Swasamai means this is what it means. Now, the person is known as religious person or Dharmi. The person who is observing all this thing is called religious person or he is called righteous, he is in the state of righteousness, and that is called dharmi. Swasami, engrossment in the self. Unity of triple jam in the mode means uh, triple jam means right faith, right knowledge, right conduct in the mode. He knows the eternal true nature of uh, true nature. He, he has now experienced, he has manifested his true nature into his modes, means trans, it, it is transient state. Mode is transient state, but there, there, that's a place where activities are occurring. And in the, in the soul, until now, those activities were related to the alien belongings, and now my when I directed my redirected my attention to my nature, then my eternal true nature is manifested in the mode. Knowing and modification both are occurring now. 
if you remember, we did the definition of Samai four times back, four Wednesdays back. We did the definition of a Samai. Samai means having modification and knowing both occurring at the same time. That's called Samai. Two activities together. Modification and knowing activity. Both occurring, and that's called summary. For example, in a, uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a matter particle, there are changes occurring. There are changes occurring. For example, if we look at this, uh, 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 this book over here, for example, this book looks like an old book because you know, papers are coming out and all kind of things are happening. Why? Because modification occurring constantly in that book. But is that knowing also going on? No. Only modification of getting old in the book is seen, but knowing was not there. But this guy here, here, this, 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 this soul here, modification keeps on occurring, 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 occurring all the time. But at the same time, knowing is also occurring. And knowing and modification, knowing and modification, both occurring is called Samai. And when I'm, when I'm in the unity of the triple gem, means I'm engrossed within, so it's called Swasamai. Two things happen together. To know the indivisibility of the eternal innate nature with triple gem, and also to have it illuminated in the mode. So whatever we said over here, knowing and transforming, knowing and uh, 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 modification, those two things happening, that's called Samai. Knowing and modification is Samai. As, as it is for the self, it is known as Swasamai. This knowing occurs for the self, that's why it's called Swasame. So this is the definition of Swasame, means this is the definition of what it means by engrossment in the self. We, decide, we define self first. Self means soul. Soul means capacity of knowing and modification both occurring together plus engrossment occurring within me. And that's why it's called Swasame. So that is the first part. Then Parsame. What is Parsame? Parsame means, now here is a banana tree. Bunch of bananas are coming out from a, uh, uh, from, from a bulb. There's a bulb over here and from the bulb, bunch of bananas coming out. So bulb of banana tree, Kerna Murni Gant Ma Thatu. It means multiple bananas, banana fruit comes out from bulb of a banana tree. Similarly, from the bulb of ignorance type of banana tree, there comes out multiple infatuation, which is the reason for transmigration. Why do I have a transmigration? Because I have an ignorance type and that from the ignorance type Multiple infatuation comes out just like this bananas, and that's the reason for my transmigration. Altered state of the soul follows the fruition of karma and gets itself into further infatuation. For example, right now I have fruition of my old karma coming in existence. They are giving me the situation, and I get joined with them. When I join in the fruition of karma, then I end up doing inclination of attachment and aversion. I end up with the infatuation. And this infatuation makes further bondage of karma. And that cycle keeps on going again and again and again and again. Soul by himself gets engrossed in the fruition. Remember, fruition of karma is there to get engrossed within or to not to get attached with them, it's my responsibility. Trigger is in my hand, buck stops at me. I am responsible whether I have to decide whether I should join with this fruition of karma or not. That's my responsibility. And so if I join 
then I end up with a further infatuation. So instead of saying in his innate, innate eternal true nature, soul gets engrossed in the infatuation state, directing, uh, directing the attention to the alien belonging, and that's where it ends up with the wrong knowledge, faith, and conduct. Remember, when I direct attention to my true nature, that means I have a right knowledge, faith, and conduct. When I'm directing my attention to the alien belonging, then it becomes wrong knowledge, faith, and conduct. Deluding state is a principal cause. Deluding state, my deluding state occurring is a principal cause. The, the fruition of karma was a secondary thing. There was, it, it is just simply there. But I decided to look at it. So that was my principal cause. Fruition of material karma becomes instrumental cause. And in the altered state, there is unity with infatuation and inclination of attachment and aversion. In when, when, when I'm in the altered state, I have the unity of infatuation and rag and dvesh. And I have those kind of uh, unities there. And that's why, that's why soul is now behaving with infatuation and inclination, uh, uh, inclination of attachment and aversion. Then this altered state is created by soul himself. Fruition of karma is the state of alien belonging, upadhi tattva. And soul is engrossed in the space points of matter. That means this soul is staying in the, uh, 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 getting angry in the space point of a matter, means Pudgal Pradesh Masti. This, that means now the soul is directed attention to the alien belonging. That's why all the mass occurred. And what was that alien belonging? It was a matter, matter, karma, fruition. So because I got involved with them, so I also became like a matter. That's what Acharya Bhagwan tries to tell us over here. And, uh, and soul is engrossed in the matter space point. Now, soul now knows, remember now, remember the definition of uh, uh, Samay. Soul now knows, soul now knows, as well as transformation at the same time for this matter space point. And because those two things are happening, soul is unity with infatuation and inclination of attachment and aversion. He knows as well as transforms. So that means it is summary. Now, one second. Vivek. Vivek. I'm sorry to just break it because you know it was some important phone call coming from Vibhuti from India. I'm very sorry, you know. Okay, so now what happened here? Samai means it, it soul is knowing and transforming. The transforming is of the wrong way, but it's knowing also that yes, I, I'm, I'm making my attachment to the alien object, so knowing is there. At the same time, transforming so that's my summit. But this knowing is in the altered state, and that's why he's absorbed in the non-self. He's absorbed in the non-self, right? <clears throat> so soul substance, summit, with the seven adjectives that we went through all, all uh, uh, before, with knowing and transformation occurring at the same time can be having his endorsement in the self, that means swasamai, or in the non-self, as a parasamai. So, Acharya Bhagwan is really, 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 really pulling us down deep and deep and deep into abyss, and just says, you understand that you are the one creating your own problem. You want to you know, get out of it, you can do it, provided you know the reality. So important thing is knowledge, 
knowledge, knowledge. If I know that I am the reason for my own inclination of attachment and aversion, who can take it out? I can take it out. Why should I blame the whole world? So those are the things I have to keep in mind and keep going. That's only the way I'm going to make it. So soul having unity with the inclination of attachment, Ragma Ekatva is known as soul to be engrossed in the non-self. When I, my inclination of attachment is there, that means I'm engrossed in the non-self. Soul is also having unity with his eternal innate nature. That means it is called engrossed in the eternal nature, true nature, self only. So it's called Swasamay. This duality is not beneficial to the soul. Means this duality, uh, I'm looking within me also. I want to be looking outside too. No, either you are directing your attention outside or inside there can't be two things happening. So that's a duality. This duality is non-beneficial to the soul. So then we are coming to this Bhavarth. Bhavarth means detailed explanation, which I think we'll be taking next time. And I think, uh, yeah, we'll just take it next time and we'll see what it, what, 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 it, or what author wants to just give us. Because basically, whatever we have seen right now, whatever we have talked about it, he is going to summarize and we are going to find it out what is happening. So those are the things that we'll be doing next week. Any questions so far? You can unmute yourself and you can go for it. Any questions? But if we're in a slumber of wrong knowledge, yes, is that our fault? Yes, it's my fault. I, with my own doing, I went in the slumber. I went in the wrong direction. I went on the wrong side of the freeway, and then I'm blaming. How come all other cars didn't know that I'm on the wrong side of the freeway? Hey, you know, buddy. You better know yourself that you are on the wrong path. Everybody is else on the right path. So if you are on the right path, you'll be okay. If you are on the wrong path, you are in trouble. You, uh, you have created your own problem. You have to solve your own problem. And, and there are ways that the, 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 the scripture tells how, how you are going to do that. I mean, at least one has to understand. One has to understand. So Jainism goes absolutely on detailed aspect of knowledge knowing 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 is first don't worry what you do right now mahavi doesn't care what you are doing but are you trying to understand the reality if you understand the reality then you will try to come out of the reality if you don't know that i'm in the slumber who is going to wake me up then nobody Nobody has time. They are all busy in their own life. Don't, I don't depend on anybody. I have to get out of my own way. You know. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Uh, if not, then uh, we'll be closing, and then uh, we'll we'll meet next time. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Javani ke namo sada We are going to recite nine times Namoka Mantra. I will recite loudly. Namo Arantam, Namo Siddham, Namo Aryan, Namo Yam, Molo Esau Salam. Namo Arantam, Namo Siddham, Namo Aryan, Namo Yam, Molo Esau Salam. Namo Arantam, Namo Siddham, Namo Aryan, Namo Yam, Molo Esau Salam. Jai Jinandra. Jai Jinandra. Kram. Please forgive Jai Jinandra. 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 Jai